This lecture looks at the solo growth model. We're going to do a change in technology, A. Uh, I've put up here as much of the basic notes as we need. So these are our key equations. Capital per worker is total stock of capital divided by the number of workers. Everything is in per worker terms. So this is GDP or output or production per worker. Technology times capital per worker. These are lowercase k's, in case it's not entirely clear, and that's an uppercase k. Investment is a fraction of GDP. Consumption is a fraction of GDP. Basically, out of your nation's income, you save some fraction of it and invest that amount, and the amount you don't save is what you consume. The other key equation here is what we call the capital accumulation equation. The change in capital is how much you're saving or investing versus how much you're losing through depreciation. When your investment rate is just equal to your depreciation rate, your capital stock is constant and we call that steady state. That happens when these two things are equal. Graphically, that happens when your investment curve is exactly equal to your depreciation curve and it defines what we call steady state level of capital per worker. Same as over here, capital accumulation, investment minus depreciation, where they cross, defines your initial steady state of capital per worker. So I'm going to look at both cases simultaneously, an increase in technology and a decrease in technology. The increase in technology they're both going to happen through the production function. So when technology suddenly improves, this improves, output goes up, given the same stock of capital. So immediately the effect over here is to move this up to a line like that. That increases out to here. So what happens initially at our old level of investment? We were just offsetting depreciation. Now that same amount of capital produces more because technology improved and our amount of investment just increased. That's extra investment. So our capital stock begins to grow. That happens until we move slowly over to the new level of capital stock. And our extra investment is gets eaten up in offsetting depreciation. We can now graph this over time. I want to look at the time paths here. This is our capital stock. We know it's going to go from a lower steady state up to a higher steady state over time. When technology begins to improve, our capital stock begins to rise because investment is higher than depreciation and we get a path that looks like that. Now I know what happens to capital so I know what happens to this capital. So if this one is increasing it's feeding into GDP and production so this is increasing too and it's going to look just like this. That's our new steady state and that's our old steady state. Well, now that I know what happens here, I know what happens to investment. It's going to follow the same. This doesn't change, so if this is rising, investment must be rising. And it looks like that as well. That's steady state. This is our old steady state. If I know what happens to GDP, I also know what happens to GDP here. This is constant, so this is rising, so that's rising. Until it reaches a new steady state from its old steady state. So, this is the diagram and these are the time paths of every variable in that diagram as they evolve over time. What happens in this graph? Well, pretty straightforward. Technology gets worse, which is going to lower this. 
which means suddenly this is going to turn negative. Why? Because investment is not going to be enough to offset depreciation. So we're going to shift this down. What happens? Originally, because technology was good, our investment was just being offset and was just enough to offset depreciation. Now, it's not enough. So our capital begins to de depreciate and fall apart, and we move towards here. So it slowly declines. If I look at this as a time path, if I put this over here, over time, I would see my capital stock decline until it reaches the new steady state. Because I know what happens to capital, I know what happens to capital here, and I can figure out what happens to GDP. It's going to follow the same path because it is just a function of capital. Since I know what happens to GDP, I can figure out what happens to investment. It's going to now decline just like this. until it reaches its new steady state. Because I know what happens to GDP, I also know what happens to consumption. This is constant, so it just follows this. And it looks like those as well. 